Hey guys, welcome back to the 27th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. And in this one we're going to talk a bit more about the middleware that we've been lo looking at over the last couple of videos. So, uh, in this one we're going to use regular expressions to make those URLs uh, and sort of match with those URLs uh, that we have in our Django project and exclude the uh, ones that we, we don't want the users to see logged in uh, with a setting in, this, in the settings. So I'm going to define that first. So I'm going to go to my settings and I'll just say uh, login exempt URLs. And this is going to be equal to a tuple of the URLs that are actually regular expressions that we're going to be able to match with. So for the first one, this is going to be a regular expression to define the login. So it's going to start and then forward slash uh, account and then login forward slash end like that. And then another one for, let's say, uh, logout. So account forward slash logout. And then one more for uh, register, because if they can't see the register page, then no one's ever going to be able to log in in the first place. So let's do that one as well. So now that we've got that defined, we should be able to use that in our middleware class. So I'm just going to go to the top here, and the first exempt URL that I'm going to want to include is that login URL itself. So in fact, I guess we don't necessarily need it here because we've, we've already got login URL, and I'm going to include that explicitly. Uh, so, in fact, I'm just going to delete that because we've already got it in terms of the login URL and I'll include that uh, like this. So, if we do exempt URLs, so this is just going to be a list of the uh, compiled versions of those regular expressions and also that login URL. So, to start with, I'm just going to define, not an empty list, but I'm going to define a list with the uh, compiled version of the login URL itself. So that's in a slightly different place in settings. It's just called login URL, not login exempt URLs or whatever we, whatever we call that. So I'm going to do settings dot login URL. So this is just for the first one. So it's going to be for this particular URL. And I'm going to, so it, it needs to be uh, without this slash here uh, for it to work properly. So I'm going to do dot L strip and I'm going to say uh, slash. So get rid of the slash at the start of the string. So what I'm going to do now is use this has after again to check, okay, so has the settings got that login exempt URLs defined? If it has, then we're going to add to this list all of the other uh, URLs, which would be the compiled versions of those regular expressions in the list or in the tuple. Uh, so we're going to do that like this. So has atra sorry, if, so checking if the settings has the attribute, so if has atra, uh, settings, in the settings file we want to look uh, for the login exempt URLs, so this is what we just defined, and I'm going to say if it is defined, I want to add all of the, uh, all of the URLs in that tuple into the exempt URLs list. So I'm going to do plus equal to, uh, which is an operator, if you don't know what this operator means, it's just uh, take whatever the contents of URL, exempt URL is, and then add that to uh, whatever, we, whatever we want to put into it. So uh, in this case, I want to do re.compile. And then what I'm actually going to do here is what's called a list comprehension. So I'm going to say uh, URL for URL in uh, settings.login exempt URLs. So if you if you haven't seen list comprehension before, what this is just saying is for everything in this uh, login exempt URLs tuple, uh, the URL is going to be the value in a particular iteration and for each iteration it's going to compile the regular expression, so the one that we've defined here, so for logout and for register, it's going to compile that and store it as that re.compile object. So in this case, because we've got two elements in this tuple, it's going to be 
uh, two elements added to this list here, which already has one element in it here. So we should have those three URLs in that list now. So all we've then got to do, once we've got that defined, is we should just be able to say, okay, well, is this, is, is, is the URL that we're looking for in the exempt URLs? If it isn't, then we can redirect. So hopefully this isn't too confusing, but what I'm gonna say is if not, so if it does not match uh, any of the URLs in the list, uh, so to do that I'm gonna say if any, uh, so this is gonna sort of be another list comprehension type of syntax just like this up here. And now I'm gonna say url.match uh, path. Now path is a variable which I'll get to in a minute, which is going to be defined as uh, the URL which the user is currently trying to access, uh, you know, which we're, we're then verifying if they can log in or not, or if they can be redirected. So I'm going to I'm going to leave path out for now. We'll define that in a second. But what I'm going to say is for URL in settings, uh, not settings. It's just going to be this list here. So exempt URLs. So just to reiterate, the user when they are not authenticated, so this redirect only applies if a user isn't authenticated, otherwise it's just going to go straight through and it can, it can just be ignored. So if the user is not authenticated and the URL that they're trying to look for is not in the list of exempt URLs, so exempt from that login authentication process, then we're going to redirect them to the settings.login URL, which is just going to be our login form that we made in a previous video. So now all I should need to do is define this path variable. So when I refresh the page here, I just got the name path not defined because I haven't defined path yet. So I'm going to say path is equal to requests.pathinfo. Now it's nice here because this uh, method that is for this middleware is being passed in request. Now request contains lots of useful information, we use it here to check if the user is authenticated, but it also has request.pathinfo. Now pathinfo contains just the string of the URL which the user is trying to request. So if we just uh, print it out at the moment, so print path, and then I'll try and refresh this page again. So it is printing out the actual URL that I'm going to. So I went to forward slash account and it did say that, but now we're getting redirected far too many times. Uh, but you can see it does say account. So that path info is the uh, path itself that I was trying to request. And then of course, when I get redirected to account forward slash login, then it prints out that path as well. So this middleware is called every single time that we go to try and process a view. However, it's not working because we get far too many redirects. And that's because this account and, well, any of these path info uh, things being printed here, they all have a slash at the start. And of course, remember I said that you can't have that slash at the start because otherwise it won't work properly. So all we have to do here, uh, all we should have to do here is do lstrip and just remove that slash, the, the very first character in the string, effectively. So, now if we, I'm gonna restart this just to make sure it works okay. And now that's working, so refresh this. So the login page works, let's see if we go to account, say. So it still redirects us there, which is good. Uh, I could try to log in, and if I can remember this password, I think, so now I'm logged in and I can see the account page. So that's really good. So now it's matching against those exempt URLs and I can view the login page not being logged in and the log, log out page because I'm log, I've, I've just logged out now. And let's just test the register page because that was the other one that we had exempt uh, in our settings. So that's all good, that all works now. But if you remember also with the other with the other way of doing it, with the login required decorator, we have a problem where we couldn't do the Django admin either. So let's test that. So we could do admin and let's try that. So it still redirects us to our login page, which is really good because it means that people can't even do 
any any pages powered by the Django admin unless they do have a, a valid login to our website. So that's it. Now I am aware that this could have been quite a lot of information for a lot of people. So uh, if you have any questions, do feel free to ask. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.